There are all sorts of different simulations that you can do inside Houdini, but today I wanted to take a look at this growth simulation that we can use to have this nice material growth across our mesh. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. This project file will be available on Patreon. If you are not aware, I did launch a Patreon. So if you wanna support me there, by all means, go ahead and do so. The link will be in the description. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable our Rhino here. Let's drop in a geometry node and let's dive in here. So I'm gonna drop in a file node and I'm just going to copy over the path to our geometry, which is from 3dscans.com. So if you wanna get this model, you can go ahead and get it from there. So if I hit F here, you can see that our model is really large and it is rotated weird. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we'll do a transform node. We'll set the rotation to be like 90 degrees and then I rotated it 270 degrees in the initial example. And then we want to make this a lot smaller. So we'll do a match size. And we'll set this to scale to fit. If I hit F now, you can see that it is now the right size, but it needs to be sitting on the ground plane here. So we set the justify Y to min and we should be all good. Now this mesh is pretty dense and we don't want that because it is going to slow things down quite a bit. So we're gonna go ahead and just remesh this. So I'm gonna do an exoside quad remesher. And if you're not using the exoside quad remesher, I would definitely recommend getting this. I think it's like a hundred bucks to get it for a bunch of different software. So no matter what you use, it's like Cinema 4D, Houdini, other stuff. Um, just take a look at their website. This is probably the best remesher that I've seen in any software. I believe it is the same one that's used in ZBrush. So I'm gonna turn off this auto cook because I'm not actually gonna cook this out because I have it saved already and it'll take a minute. But we would set the adaptive size up to 100, just change this to adaptive quad count as well. And I would up this to like 500,000. That will give us a pretty dense mesh, but it is significantly reduced from where it's at and maintains a lot of the details that we see in our mesh here. So let's go ahead and load that in. So file and then just Rhino low poly here. And you can see now that we have our mesh, but the problem here is that it has lost a lot of the detail. If I take a look between the two here, you see specifically in the face and kind of down here, we lose a lot of the detail. So we want to correct that. So let's drop in a ray node. We'll wire in our first input and then our second input will be our high poly. So we'll set this to display and it breaks everything. And that's because we need to change a couple things here. So we're going to change this from primitives to points and project rays to minimum distance. And now I'll wire this into a null and you can see that we have gained back all of our detail pretty much anyways. So just flipping between the two, you see we get most of our detail back, which is what we're looking for. So now we are ready to move on to the actual simulation part. And with this, we need to basically create a mask that's going to grow across our mesh. And that's what we're gonna use at render time to display the materials. So we need to change the initial color of this. So I'm gonna set a color node equal to black, just straight black. That will give us a value of zero. So basically our first material will be start off fully on this mesh. And then as it grows across the white will mask in our second material. Now we need to set a starting point for the growth of this this um, simulation. So let's set a, another color node down. We'll keep this set to white, and then we need to select a point. You can do multiple points if you want. I just did one for my example, and that's what we're gonna do now. So I'll go ahead and zoom in. I'm gonna start on the horn here, so I'll just select this point here, and that sets that point to white. And that'll be the starting point, like I said, for our mesh. So now we're ready to start the simulation. So we'll drop in a solver node and dive on in here. Go back to frame one here. And this is gonna be built around the point VOP node. So we'll drop in a point VOP 
and we'll wire this in, but we want the previous frame to be our second input and our Rhino to be the first input. So we'll dive in here and then we have a bunch of different things that we can do in a point fop, but we're going to be using the point cloud nodes. So point cloud, this will allow us to access the point cloud of our mesh. So I use a PC open, we can wire in our previous frame into the file and our points or our position into our P. And then we can use a PC filter or point cloud filter to access our color here. So we'll do CD for the channel. And then what we need to do from here is drop in a maximum node. And we're going to wire in both our previous frames color and our color that's on our mesh. And this is going to select whatever the maximum color is. So whatever the, the largest value of color is, that's going to be what our color is for our mesh. And I'm just going to make a little bit more room here. If I press play now, you can see if we look at our horn, I press play, it kind of starts to smooth out across the start of this horn. Press play, you can see that it's slowly starting to move across the horn, but it's not really doing what we want. And that's because it is just kind of um, blurring this and we want to make the the values increase so the way that we're going to do that is doing a multiply constant and we're going to multiply our values by a value of two and if i press play now you can see that it's starting to grow across the mesh but you see we get this error here and basically we need to clamp this value because it's going over what we can display here so if we just set a clamp node down so I'll clamp it from zero to one. You can see that it's already working here. So if I press restart and play, it is now growing across our mesh. Now the issue that we're running into now is that this is super slow and this would take a ton of different frames to make it across the entire mesh, which we don't have all day to wait for. So we can increase this, but this is going to significantly slow down the calculation times for this. So if we come to our point cloud open, we can change the number of points that it's going to be searching around for to something higher. I'm going to do something like a thousand. And if I press play now, you can see it's going to take a lot longer to calculate, but as it starts to grow across the mesh, it's going to be moving a lot faster. So I'll give it just a second. You can see it's kind of starting to go now. Give it a few more frames here. And it's starting to come in. You can see, like I said, it is growing a lot faster than what we had set before. In 10 frames, it's already eclipsed what we had across like 50 in the other one. So we'll go ahead and pause this. And I'm going to bring in the cached out version of this. Let's actually just jump up and copy this over. So I already have this cached out. So we'll paste this down, take a look. And now you can see if I press play that it grows across our mesh, but there's still an issue that we have to address. And that is, this is a very uniform growth. This edge is very soft and doesn't have any breakup in it. So we want to just kind of fix that. And the way that we're going to do that is through some noises. But first we need to drop down an attribute blur. And this is just going to blur out our mask a little bit so i'm going to set this to cd and then just change this to like 80 iterations and you can see if i disable and re-enable that it's just smoothing things out a little bit so now we can drop in another point vop and dive on in here and in this we want to drop down a uniform noise static wire up our position and then we're going to multiply that with the color of our mesh. So we'll do CD and our noise, and we'll just pipe that into our CD. Now I'm also gonna skip forward to where this mesh is mostly covered so we can kind of dial in these settings. And I'm going to change this noise type to sparse convolution. I like the way that looks. I'm also gonna add in a fractal 
and we're going to change the frequency. So this is kind of personal preference, what you want to do here, but I'm going to set this frequency to eight and then something like 17 and then eight. And this gives us a little bit of variation in our mesh. And then I'm also going to change the gain. We're just going to crank this up so we can get a very high contrast on this noise. And I'm also going to change the amplitude again to something like eight. And this will again, just increase the contrast of our mesh. Now, the issue that we see now is that we have this across our entire mesh, which we don't want. We just want across, if I go ahead, go back. We just want it across the edge where this is kind of blurred out, where the values are between zero and one. They aren't zero or one. So we'll go ahead and go back into our point bot. And in here, we want to add in an add node. We'll wire in both our color, whoops, our color and our noise. Pipe that into our CD. And you can see that we still aren't quite getting what we want, but it is closer. So these values, if I go ahead and look at our geometry spreadsheet here, you can see we have a ton of values that are over one. So most of this white is over one and that is kind of causing some issues. But also we can just clamp this and fix it. So we clamp it from zero to one and go ahead and just move back. Now you see now we are only getting this blending between the noise and our mask in the values that were zero to one before. So that is basically what we're looking for. And like I said, you can kind of change the values of your noise here to get whatever look that you want, but this looks fine. Let's actually just maybe change the offset just to some random values. And then we are all set. Now that's pretty much it for the mask. One thing that we can do is just adjust this a little bit further. We're going to do attribute adjust color and we don't want to adjust the value. We would just want to color correct it a little bit. And again, we're just going to increase the, uh, the contrast here. So we'll up the contrast because we want to just make this a harsh blend. We don't want this to be a soft blend between them. We want this to be a nice harsh blend between the colors. So if I go ahead and actually drop down a material node, I'm going to pin this and then come over to our material context and we'll create an RS material builder. We'll call this like Rhino underscore tutorial. And then I'm just going to copy this standard material. We'll up the roughness on both of these and we'll do a RS material blend. Now you're going to want to set these materials to whatever materials you want to blend between. I'm just going to use these as demonstrations. So we'll wire this into layer one color. We'll change this initial color to maybe like a, like an orange, mm, something that doesn't look horrible, maybe like that. And then we'll change this to a nice bluish. And then we want to access the color, which is going to be our mask. So we'll do an RS point attribute. Now you can do this with other renders as well. You just have to use the corresponding um, settings to access the particle or not the particle, but the, the point color to use as your mask. So we'll wire that into our layer one blend, and then we should be all set. So if I go ahead and bring up our render view, We'll take a second to load here, but we should see where our black is on our mesh, one color, and then where our white is a different color. And it looks like something went wrong. That's because we didn't assign our material. So we'll go ahead and do that and just restart our render. And now you can see that we get this blend across the mesh. And that actually looks really cool with those colors wasn't expecting that but yeah that is the gist of this material growth across the mesh now obviously you can apply this to different meshes and if you want to 
change the way the growth occurs, you can select multiple points in your color so that it can, you can set one to down here as well on the horn, one maybe one on the tail, and it will grow across the multiple, multiple spots. Um, you could scatter points across the mesh and just, um, you know, set the colors to, to white on there. A um, bunch of different ways that you can do this, but this is what I liked for this specific scenario. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. Like I said, these project files will be available on Patreon. So if you want to get them, then go ahead and head on over there and you can download the project files there. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I've got a bunch of other stuff coming. So make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss out on that. I do have a bunch of other stuff on Houdini. If you're interested in learning more about Houdini, definitely check out those videos. I also cover a bunch of stuff on Redshift inside Houdini as well. It is my main render engine. So check those out if you're interested. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.